Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for that technicality. I hope you are able, able to hear me now. Uh, again, I am here tonight to uh, facilitate the presentation of this audit report that has been worked on for over a month, for over a month. And I have with me here on the set four members of the audit committee who have been delegated, delegated to uh, come here and do the presentation of this report. And so the members of the committee shall be doing the presentation by themselves. And what I plan to do is after they have done the initial presentation, I will ask a few questions and then the phone lines will be open for anyone with questions to be able to uh, ask uh, any question. And so we are hoping that this report will be comprehensive and laid a lot of issues and questions about my trip to Boya in order financial issues with the interim government to rest. Uh, I have Comrade Yaya, I have Comrade uh, Martin, I have Comrade Shea, I have Comrade Tani uh, here with me on the set and they, they shall be presenting this report and taking your questions uh, that is how, that is what is planned. That is a plan here at hand. Comrade Tangi, I'm sorry, Comrade uh, Martin is uh, the head of this uh, delegation and I will pass the microphone uh, right to him to welcome you guys and uh, start with the presentation. Comrade uh, Martin, it's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, good. Good afternoon. Um, I'm happy to be here this afternoon to talk about the uh, the audit report. And first of all, I would like to uh, extend my greetings to everybody, everyone at Ground Zero, uh, particularly all our uh, countrymen and women who've been putting out the fight since the struggle started. I would also like to uh, extend my greetings to the Nero 10, our president who is now behind bars. Um, I'd like to extend my greetings to uh, the member of the press, uh, the activists who've actually been pushing this struggle forward in all dimensions that I can't even enumerate here. Um, of course, this, uh, this, this, this audit has been an, an issue for, for quite a while, but I'm just going to give you some sort of a tapestry, how the whole thing looks like. Um, one thing I have to talk about first before I get into the substance is that uh, we are not here as politicians. I'm not a politician, okay? So we have to be as balanced as possible, and I think we are going to demonstrate that balance. Um, so this is the report. I'm going to give an introduction to the report, how it was uh, we worked on it, and I'm going to pass it over to uh, one of our technical people, um, Comrade Tanya, uh, to give us uh, know, what we actually the meat of the of the report. And uh, I would, finally, I'm going to pass it to uh, Comrade Shea to talk about the the management letter. Um, now, uh, moving forward, what is important is that it's also an educational uh, 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 educational occasion so that uh, ambassadors should know exactly what we're doing and what are the expectations of every government. Very often, we instead of actually talking about the issues, we talk about people, we talk about personalities. Uh, talk about diplomas and so on and so forth. I don't think that's, you know, that is important. We have to learn to ask the right questions. And today I hope I'm going to give ammunition uh, to those who really want to seek justice and fairness in our society as we move forward to have the right uh, questions to ask who, you know, whoever he wants to ask them to. Um, before I go to that, let me talk about the audit itself. We have to understand what an audit is. What is an audit? An audit is an official inspection of an individual's or organization's accounts, typically by an independent body. And very important, you have to underline the word independent. What is independent? There are two ways you can define independence. The first independence is that it can actually be by internal employees or um, internal uh, within the organization. However, they shouldn't have been part of the process. If they had nothing to do with the process, yes, they, they can actually act as, an, as auditors or by an external body for the same reason that they shouldn't have any prior knowledge. So what is important for us to do is to take the information provided by the source and try to see whether everything is done accurately. Now, 
So coming back to the process, um, sometime in March, and we, you know, we, we after there's been a lot of uh, uh, argument regarding the authenticity of the report and whether it was balanced or not, I think the first thing that happened was that it was presented to the Restoration Council. Restoration Council uh, turned it down, and that is very important. And I really congratulate Restoration Council for doing that. That's the first indication that we have a, a system that can actually think for itself. You don't just take things because it's part of the government that you work with. So the fact that they turned it down to say it wasn't accurate, it, it, it talked about people as opposed to process, I think that was a good thing. And the next thing was for us to put together um, uh, 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 an independent or something that we feel that is as independent as possible in order to move forward. And I think it was very intelligent of the government to suggest that we should go to all the 13 counties from Bazonia and look for people who have expertise in accounting, finance, uh, administration, project management, and so on and so forth, so that they can put their heads together and actually determine exactly what the problems were. And we were actually supported by, facilitated by, by the team uh, from the IG itself, headed by ethics, uh, the gentleman who is in charge of ethics. That's a very important term. So we had this, uh, this uh, very big task to, to look into the, into, into, the, into the health audit. And our scope was very simple. We have to obtain evidence about the amounts and disclosures in the financial statements uh, regarding my trip to Boya and uh, the citizen uh, to give reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatements caused by either uh, fraud or error, or error fraud. Okay, that's very important. And uh, again, coming back to what has been going on in social media, people talk about fraud, people talk about thieves, people talk about uh, embezzlement. We have to have hard data to demonstrate that there was actually fraud. And for us to be able to do that, we don't just look at numbers and claim simply because we don't have access to them, it means fraud. No, it doesn't mean fraud. Fraud has to come from a very precise analysis by experts, by forensic experts to actually come out with documents that you can stand in the court of law and say, based on this, this and this, I think we can determine that it is fraud. And one of the key issues here is that for anyone who has ever worked with, <clears throat> with taxes or financial uh, 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 analysis and so on and so forth, there's something called QuickBooks. QuickBooks were designed for that, sim that simple reason, that it can actually determine fraud. If you change numbers in quick, QuickBooks, you will not get away with it because it's going to store it. So if somebody tells you that he did something well and, uh, and not, be, not ready to offer you access to QuickBooks, to actually see how the process went through, it is very unlikely that it, it, it was done uh, with integrity. So we have to understand this. So we had difficulties in terms of information to access so that we can actually perform the audit the way it should be done. Um, we contacted some members of governments, some of whom appeared, others did not. However, as the executive summary states, we had a, a, a few people who did not provide the sort of assistance that we needed. We are not saying here that these people stole money. You have to understand this very clearly. We are not saying, we are simply saying that we did not have access to the, the departmental financial records so we can determine beyond reasonable doubt that something went wrong. We also have to understand that in terms of uh, income and expenditure, we're able to establish something. There was an income of about 1.3 million. Absolutely, we have that information. There is expenditure very close to that. So in terms of income and expenditure, on paper, it looks, to be honest with you, it looks good. There is an income and there's an expenditure because if there was an income which was not close to expenditure, then there was going to be a big issue. However, the only reason why we are here today is that the expenditure that we saw, we don't have any document to back it up with. Not sufficient. So for us to conduct an audit to a point where we can say, okay, we are absolutely sure that there was no fraud. We do not have the data. It is not representative. We had access to a limited number of, uh, uh, of data, and from that, it wasn't conclusive. However, we could have stopped there and said, this is the end of this study. But we felt that we owe the Amazonian people at least some corrective measures. If you do an audit, in every audit that I've been involved in, there is always the op opportunity for corrective actions. And I think that is the, the pitch we want to present today. If there is any takeaway from this discussion, is that what do we expect 
from any government. It doesn't have to be uh, 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 Sakos or Sisikos or whoever may come in the future. What do we expect from them? So we put together what they call a management letter. The management letter actually identifies the deficiencies, things that we found that wasn't right, and said, this is the way forward. And I call upon all Amazonians, especially the journalists and the activists, go through this report, look at the recommendations. And in the future, I would like you to call uh, any of the secretaries of state or whoever is in high position, no matter you know, the, the, the following. Can you tell me how your department can ensure that in the future we are not going to have the problems we're having today? We need corrective actions because you cannot cry over spilled milk. And having said that, it is also incumbent upon people when talking about this report that you do not give false information on anybody because nobody has been able to identify all the way to the nitty gritty elements that you can actually say this person has done something drastically wrong. We know that there are procedures that were not followed. We know that because of the nature of the struggle, people were not ready to do it. We recognize all that. But as a people, I think it's important for us to know what is right and what is wrong, and we should move forward. And, and that's what we are, uh, I think we should do here. So having said all that, um, a few things here and there. I mean, our tradition, we, we, we claim we are Anglo-Saxons. We talk about the the, 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 the argument of, of force, not the, you know, or the force of argument, okay? So we have to use the force of argument in order to put forward our ideas, even if we don't agree on the same principle, okay? We should not uh, sort of uh, put people in prison, prison from the, you know, the, the court of social media. I don't think that is good. We should stay away from personalities, not talk about their education or where they got it. Let's talk about the issues. It doesn't matter who is in government. It doesn't matter who is holding a position. You should be able to respond to the Ambazonian people when you are asked a question. Can we, if we talk about policy, how are you sure that you are meeting the, you know, the elements of that policy? If you talk about a vision, how are you meeting that vision? So there are two things that you have to think about today. We have to talk about a mission and a vision. Every department, I hope, should be able to publish its mission and its vision and should be able to defend it. And we can do an audit to make sure that that vision is being supported or to see where element, things are not going right so that we can make corrective measures for this, uh, for this struggle to go ahead or for you know when we become independent for our country to be prosperous. Every country on earth, America is 200 years old. Every day they make changes, continuous uh, 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 development. We have to be able to develop you know, continuously. We have to change our procedures. We have to change the way people think. And with that, I don't think we're gonna have any problem. So I'm going to turn over now, uh, maybe Comrade Shea, since you're head of ethics, to give a few words and then we can go to the technical part before you take over to talk about the, the management level. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Chris, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mungwa. Uh, for your presentation. In fact, I think you have said it all. The only thing I would say here is that Amazonians should be proud that they have real professionals out there. Whether it's in the area of finance, in the area of accounting, or in the area of management and administration, we do have people that are of substance. I say that because I saw uh, the, 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 the execution of that professionalism during this audit process. The accountants, the three accountants that we had in the audit committee were just fantastic in trying to look at the little information that we had with regards to finances. They were able to put things together in a professional manner, following international norms. And that is key. There are international norms for financing and accounting that we have not yet adopted, but they decided that, look, the only way we are going to be able to conduct this process is to look at what are the international norms, what are the international standards for auditing a government, for auditing a company that prevail. And they were able to put that together and uh, bring forth certain elements which we looked at and they explained to us why they could not do a disclaimer they explained to us why they could not do an exception. 
And they explained to us why they wanted to settle on an adverse uh, 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 opinion. And so these professionals were absolutely great. I think that I learned a lot. I think anybody who was in that audit committee that was a lay person learned a lot from these professionals. And I will urge Amazonians to identify several of these professionals in all fields and bring them forward to actually serve Ambazonia. Dr. Mungwa has already said it. We cannot be crying over spilled milk. We've got to move forward. As he said, there, is, there was no forensic uh, way of interpreting whether somebody stole money, somebody committed fraud, and so on and so forth. But this committee did the best they could. I monitored it very, very closely. And I told them, anything that we find has to go public. We cannot hide it. I also let them know that there are certain sensitive areas in the financial process that were undertaken that we cannot make public. No matter how much questions you ask about those sensitive areas, we are not going to give you answers here because it jeopardizes the, 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 the struggle. We don't want to do that. So if you have questions in areas that you may need answers and those answers uh, in sensitive areas, we're going to decline to answer those areas and for reason, and for, for good reason, because we can't jeopardize the process just because we want to tell Ambazonians that somebody stole something or something of that nature. But we're going to give you uh, adequate explanation for you to be able to understand. Thank you very much. I think we can go ahead, Dr. Mungwa. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Kambashe. And just a few points before we turn over to um, Kambashe Tanyi. Uh, people should know that we put in more, more than 200 hours working on this document. And there were times that uh, it would be uh, 1 a.m. in New York and 6 a.m. in London. And we're all working. So this was not something that we took it casually. We put a lot of man hours. Everybody, including those who are, who are ground zero, they called in very late at night in order to make sure that all the opinions that they had come. We were able to talk to 20, 22 people and each of them lasted between two and a half hours to four hours and everything's recorded. So it's not as if you just talk to us and left. So it will be, it, everything's been archived and we hope that in the future it will be available to every uh, Amazonian to listen to. Hope not probably within the next month or so. This has to be uh, properly uh, done in the proper way. It's a political decision and I have nothing to do with that. So you have to bear in mind that it wasn't something that we took it casually. We burnt the midnight oil, if you remember that expression, in order to get to results because everybody Everybody's interested to know what the facts are. And just to make sure that people do not think that we are closing this, 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 this audit. If you read the executive summary, and I can actually um, read the last uh, sentence here, it says that you know, no professional accounting body can provide a thorough and objective audit based on such limited data. As a result, this audit process exercise is still ongoing pending credible or vetted information from any source made available to the to the audit committee. Which means that instead of you just saying that, oh, these people are lied, bring the information, send it to us. If you give me vetted information, information we feel is accurate, we are going to revise the report and we'll probably come back online if that is what you want and talk about it. If we've made mistakes, we are going to apologize if something that we did enough in, in Advertently, we are going to apologize because our job here is not to pursue any particular political uh, uh, influence, but to give the Ambassador people facts that they can use to make decisions. And I hope from this presentation, we will have an army of people who will be tasking the politicians to provide information on the workings of the department, not on the way they look and not on the way they dress, not on the way they talk and not on the way they talk about other people how they do their job in order to you know uh, to serve the, the Ambazonian people. That's the message I think I hope to, to, to pass across to them. Comrade Tanya, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Mungwa. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade She. I'm so happy that uh, you um, all and all the team are uh, 
very happy with the work that uh, we've done and everybody will appreciate what we've done at the end of this presentation. So to start with, um, we've produced the audit report. The uh, internal audit committee has produced the audit report and the members of the internal audit committee uh, from Bui division or from Bui county we have Odette Yaya. From Boyo, we have Cassian Walang. From Donga Mantung, we have Mata She. From Fako, we have Elizabeth Oliver. From Kupe Maniba, we have Abuno Akwe. From the BLM, we have Tanjong Tadocha. From Manu, we have Tani Eno. From Meme, we have John Bacham. From Mentu, we have Yebo France. From Nezam, we have Clement Asongwe. From Momo, we have Dennis Tenya. From Ivian, we have Edwin Tamara. From Ngoketunja, we have Martin Mungwa. Here are the 13 people coming from the county um, who constituted the internal audit committee. And um, we had facilitators. We have Dr. Metuge Ekomenzoge, who um, is the chair of the Internal Audit Committee. We have uh, Francis Che, the ethics from Ethics Committee, and actually he's the chair as well. We have Planning and Internal Control Professor JJ Asungu. We have SOS for Economy, Investment, and Natural Resources, Dr. Luis Mboa. And from the judiciary, we have Barrister David Nde. So these are the people that were, um, that constitute the Internal Audit uh, Committee. We were independent. And I will go straight to the, the content of um, the report, the table of content. The report is made up of um, 40 pages and the report is broken down into seven sections. The first section is general and strategic information. The second, statement of responsibility. The third, internal audit committee independent audit report. Financial statements activities accounting and accounting principle notes to the financial statement and annexes so those are the seven key areas that make up our internal audit um our uh, internal audit report so i'll go straight to the general and strategic uh, information the country is a federal republic it, it this explains um, the um, the country which we are auditing, which is the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, the nature of the revenue and the acting president. So these are strategic informations that we have. Acting president, Dr. Samuel Sako Ikome, Restoration Council Chairman Kometa Elvis, Accounting Office, Washington, D.C., the bankers, we have Bank of America and TD Bank, Internal auditor, I just said, 13 from the counties and five representatives who were facilitators. So, um, the audit, we had, uh, we received financial statement. And the financial statement that we received were just um, um, insufficient. They were just um, um, the income statement that we received. And here, um, on the second point here, we are explaining uh, the responsibility of management in the preparation of the financial statement. In a perfect world, management is supposed to, pre is supposed to prepare the financial statements, which are made up of the statement of financial position, the income statement or statement of comprehensive income, the funds flow statement, formally we call it the cash flow statement, and statement of changes in equity and notes to the financial statement. 
what we receive, we receive um, the income statement or statement of comprehensive income. So it's the responsibility of management to prepare these accounts, hand them to an auditor, whether it's external or internal, who wants to do an audit. We did not receive the complete. So management need to tell, there is a, uh, the second page is saying, management need to tell us, needs to approve that yeah. this is their responsibility. So I'll move to the next, where we address um, um, the Internal Audit Committee Independent Audit Report. So we address a letter, you know, spe specifying exactly what the assignment that was given to us, what we've done to the Restoration Council. So the letter goes thus. The Internal Audit Committee, the chairman, the Restoration Council, sorry, the Restoration Council, British Southern Cameroon. Dear Chairman, the Internal Audit Committee comprising of 13 counties expert was enacted by the internal interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia and each county responded by mandating an expert representative that constituted the current committee charged with the responsibility of performing a thorough and in-depth audit of the financial statements of my trip to Boya, MTTB project and citizenship levy during the period ending December 31st, 2000 and uh, December 31st, 2018. So we audited the available financial statement of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia for the period ending December 31st, 2018 under the international standard of Supreme Audit Institution, ISAAI 1700 of International Organization of Supreme Audit Institution, yet to be adopted as an act by the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. So basically what we did is we took international standards because um, Ambazonia doesn't have, you know, uh, standards on her own. So we fall back to international standards to um, perform our audit exercise. So, um, the next, we have respective responsibilities of the interim government and the auditor. In an audit, people have responsibilities. Um, uh, the government or the, the, the interim government has responsibility to prepare financial statements and the auditors have the responsibility to, um, um, to audit the financial statement. So this is the responsibility. The scope of the audit. An audit involves obtaining evidence about the amounts and disclosure in the financial statement sufficient to give reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement, whether caused by fraud or error. This includes an assessment of whether the accounting policies are appropriate to the Ambazonian circumstances and have been consistently applied and adequately disclosed. The second point is the reasonableness of the significant accounting estimates made by the interim government accountant and the overall presentation of the financial statement. So, in addition, the internal audit committee read all available. So what the internal, the internal audit committee did, we read all available information that was given to us. However, this gave, there were a couple of inconsistencies. So this actually made us to determine whether to include or not to include things into the um, um, audit report or to consider them in the audit report. The internal audit committee retained as findings. So we had a couple of findings and there were six of them under accounting, 
under budgeting and budgetary, the cash and cash, the bank and cash balance, the resources, the disbursement, and our fixed assets. So I will start from the findings with our accounting organization. With our accounting organization for the period ending, or for the period to December 31st, 2018. We were able to receive final unsubstantiated revenues of $1,364,310. And unsubstantiated funds disbursement, they were amounting to Although the above revenue and disbursement figures are largely unsubstantiated and incomplete, the Internal Audit Committee agreed to investigate and establish the reliability in terms of economic efficiency and effectiveness while pursuing the strategy to obtain audit and publish piecemeal reports of all the previous financial transactions of the Federation. So what we are saying here, we didn't receive complete information. So with respect to that, we got, we needed evidence to substantiate the uh, revenue and the disbursement, the revenue of 1,364,310 and the disbursement of 1,333,000 uh, and 37 uh, uh, dollars, we didn't have that to substantiate that amount. However, the Internal Audit Committee attribute the key issue of incomplete um, accounting and financial to these individuals. We have comrade Kalesh Bungo, the position Health was Secretary of State of Health and Social Services. Documents we required but we did not obtain were expense justifications, receipts, bank transfer statements, oral explanation and clarification. Number two, Comrade Brado Tabenya, Secretary of State for Economy and Finance. SOSEF. Documents required are not obtained. Access to QuickBooks, complete financial statement, bank facilities, signatories level, bank statements, and other important accounting information incorporation documentation documents of Ambazonia Consulting and Ambazonia Foundation, oral explanation and clarification. The next is Comrade Helen Akonji, Treasurer of Amb Ambazonian Foundation. Documents require bank statements, authori authorized disbursement, transactions, annual tax filing information, and other important accounting information, oral explanations and clarification. The IAC, the Internal Audit Committee, appeal to stewardship of modern land Ambazonian for these personalities to step forth and dialogue in the conduct of this audit is still pending. The second item from our findings was budgetary, budgeting and budgetary allocation. The IEC within the period ending 31st December 2018 observed that all funding, including citizenship, levies, donations, fundraising, and even MTTB, among others, were not framed within the context of running a budgetary technical elaborated and approved. Within the period, we had unsubstantiated um, revenue of $1,364,309.50. Which is approximately um, three hundred and ten dollars, and 
unsubstantiated fund disbursement amounts to amounting to one million three hundred and thirty three thousand and were not executed in accordance with any approved budget. What this means is that we didn't have a budgetary framework in mind when we were looking for this, when we were seeking this funds or this disbursement. A budget, we know our income and expenses that uh, a government will put forth for a year. We didn't see that. We didn't see the budget. So this is our finding. And um, no one should take it personal or to say, oh, this is because this is international standard that we are dealing here. So no finger pointing. It's not a fault of anybody. It's the situation where we find ourselves. So the next one is the bank and cash balance. The ISP is yet to be furnished with bank statements, signatories, bank accounts, as well as standing orders concerning bank accounts that are open and operated by the successive administration for financial transactions in America, continental Europe, South Africa, and Nigeria, etc. Invitations to oral questioning to evaluate the stewardship functions before the internal audit committee panel to key executive executives are still pending the key executives have already mentioned them three of them that we haven't we we haven't um, um uh, had a chance to discuss with them to interview them as regards the detention of financial information as well as resources belonging to the federation the Internal Audit Committee requested the IG to compare these outgoing executives to provide information as regards all the bank accounts. Meanwhile, at the end, meanwhile, the 2018 year end cash account certificate and IOU endorsement had not been presented to the Internal Audit Committee by any member of the interim government to substantiate the cash in hand balance of $31,273.54. So basically, there was no cash count. We didn't see any cash count, any documentation for cash count. We didn't see any IOU certificate. Maybe somebody, um, um, uh, something was taken out by a, a department and they, they have not substantiated. We didn't see that. So that is what we are saying. Although we have $31,273.54, we, we, it is unsubstantiated. Resources of the interim government. So the main resource for the period ending December 31st, 2018, the resources of the interim government made available for the internal audit committee to express an independent audit opinion included. We have Revenues and Bazunia Foundation. We have My Trip to Boya. We have 617,743. Others, we have 347,471, a total of 965,214. Ambazonian Consulting, the total is 399,096, which is broken down into my trip to Boya, 193,439, and others, 205,657. Others include levy, donations, and others. So although the amount, the total of both Ambazonia Foundation and Ambazonia Consulting is $1,364,310. Although the amount of $1,364,310 was not completely substantiated, 
thousand and thirty seven uh, dollars was disbursed to various individual under executive function of which fifty four point five percent was tacitly justified. The Internal Audit Committee identified that the Ambazonian Consulting and Ambazonian Foundation are all corporate entities incorporated in good faith in the names of some outgone members of the interim government, into which the above funds and other unidentified funds were lodged by the people of Ambazonia to prosecute the revolution, but some individuals, although not still members of the IG, are unwilling to relinquish ownership. It is on this premise that the Internal Audit Committee is unable to have exhaustive financial information on the total revenue, expenses, and expenditures to enable a complete audit assignment. Number five, fund disbursement, that is expenses. Within the period under audit ending December 31st, 2018, the unsubstantiated resources of the Federation were, disb were disbursed to individual members of the interim government by other of merit. Thus, Department DHS, the individual is Sebastian, and in fa from foundation, disbursement to Sebastian was $344,731.04. From consulting was $22,800. So the total of $367,531.04, which is a 27% of the total um, funds that were disbursed was given to um, was given to uh, Comrade Sebastian. The second one is miscellaneous, which um, the individual is Brado Tavinia. The total, there is um, 23,619, um, $23,619.08 was coming from the foundation. And consulting was $170,245.72, a total of $193,864.80, percentage 14%. DHS Bishop Egiwan, Bishop John Egiwan, foundation $140,491.20, and consulting. $25,000, a total of $165,491.20. Percentage 12%. Ambazonia Consulting. <laughs> um, here, withdrawn without an identity. Um, but Actually, we will fall back to the Secretary of Finance in this one. So, uh, the former Secretary of Finance, sorry. So, foundation, $140,984.36. The total is $140,984.36. That is 10%. Others, this also, we don't know um, this. So we will fall back to the Secretary of Finance. He is supposed to let us know who, who had what or who spent what or who the disbursement went to. So we have $73,886.72 and consulting $48,436.78, a total of $122,323.50. Percentage, 9%. SCB payment, SCBC payment. This, I think, the Secretary of um, Communication, it should go to the Secretary of Communication. Foundation, amount coming from Foundation 98,249. 
the total 98,249, and that was 7%. Presidency, I think this will go directly to the presidency, which is um, the team is headed by uh, Dr. Um, Sako. Um, foundation is zero, but consulting is $86,521.37. Total, 86,521 dollars and 37 cents. Percentage is six percent. ABC TV, Comrade Chris Anu. Foundation, 49,000 um, and 59 dollars and 25 cents. Consulting fifteen thousand five fifteen thousand five hundred and twenty one dollars and seventy four cents, a total of sixty four thousand five hundred and eighty dollars and ninety nine cents, percentage four percent. HSS College Bungo Foundation fifty four thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty cents, a total fifty four thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty cents, that is four percent. President C. Ayambe Elangu, Foundation $15,144.66, total $15,144.66, 1%. Reservation Council, Chairman Elvis Cometer, Foundation $6,043.11, Consulting $6,500, a total of $12,543.11, 1%. DFA Professor Anyangwe, foundation $4,362, total $4,352, a total of 0.3%. Uh, Legal fees, Bobga. Foundation Zero, consulting $3,735.76, total $3,735.76, 0.3%. Legal, legal fees, uh, Njaru, $2,936 from Foundation Zero for consulting, $2,936 for uh, total um, percentage, 0.2%. So the total amount that the foundation for expenses for foundation was $954,274.92 and for consulting $378,761.32, a total of $1,336,000. One million three hundred thirty three thousand and twenty nine dollars and twenty nine cents. So we have cash in hand. The cash in hand is. $31,273.54. And this gives us the total of all expenses and the cash in hand gives us our total money that we um, got as revenue, which is $1,364,309.83. From these analysis, the Internal Audit Committee is unable to up appreciate which of the disbursement indicated in the schedule above relates to key and fundamental objectives of the of the Ambazonian revolution. Detailed analysis could be seen in the notes to the financial statement in section six to this report. So if we go to section six, we will see the detailed analysis each individual, the expenses that we have here have been analyzed in uh, section six. So the seat item that is coming from our findings, 
was fixed assets of the Federation. The General Audit Committee, um, or under normal circumstances, the capital, uh, uh, capital investment, the capex by the interim government were not captured in a fixed asset schedule for the period ending 31st of December 2018 and made available to the Internal Audit Committee. However, we saw, um, we identified significant disbursement, including but not limited to 98, which was actually disbursed for SCBC TV and $26,000, and $25 was disbursed to ABC TV. So these were the findings, the things that we found while we were doing our audit. So I'll go to the opinion on financial statement. I will read the opinion directly as it is on the financials. In our opinion, because of significant of the matters discussed in the basis of adverse opinion paragraph, the financial statements do not give a true and fair, fair view of the financial position of the interim government as at December 31st, 2018, of its expenditure and income for the year then ended. Secondly, have not been properly prepared in accordance with the um, international public sector accounting standard, IPSAS, Code of Practice on State Accounting yet to be adopted by the interim government. Basis for adverse opinion so these are the basis of um, the basis for our adverse opinion on the financial statement. Bookkeeping information and source documentations were largely absent, and the financial statement remained largely incomplete and unjustified. The internal audit committee did not have complete access to important financial information, such as mobile costs platform, PayPal account, counter deposit, wire deposit, MTTD account, complete bank statement, and cash contribution, etc. Additionally, there was a systematic lack of full cooperation by key executive members. We we have opinion on other matters. Actually, we don't have like a lot of other matters, but based on the um, international public sector accounting standard and international um, organization of Supreme Audit Institute, these are some matters on which the internal audit committee is required to report by exception. These are standard, standard uh, things. The internal audit committee is required to report to the IG if, in their opinion, the annual governance financial statement does not comply with the guidance on go good governance, a practice yet to be introduced in the realms of the interim government. The internal audit committee had reported a matter in the public interest as required by the um, International Organization of Supreme Audit uh, Institute in the course of or at the conclusion of the audit. The Internal Audit Committee had made a written recommendation to the interim government in the course of or at the conclusion of the audit. It had exercise so this one is the management letter that will after this we will be having the management letter the internal audit had exercised any other special powers as auditor under the relevant disposition of intosa international organization of supreme audit institute issues of public interest so these are the key audit matters that we had. 
significant key audit matters that we had when we were conducting the audit. Called the audit effort was to determine each in his merit by trip to Boya revenue, citizenship levy, and other revenue sources, disbursement of funds, authorization, justifications of expenditures, and supporting documentation. The internal audit account subcommittee extracted the MTTB and citizenship levy revenue using a limited three-month bank statement from Bank of America, Braintree, and other incomplete financial statement the internal audit committee was able to obtain. Revenue discrepancies related to citizenship levy were found between brain tree statements and other, and the amount declared on the previous audit report. As a result, the citizenship levy revenue on the previous audit report was entirely excluded from the current analysis in this audit report. The internal audit committee saw Internal Audit Committee Subcommittee on Accounts discovered that mobile cost platform that was exclusively created for capturing contributions to my trip to Boya had been automatically activated due to failure to meet subscription charges for renewal. However, a report received from the Director of Resource Mobilization revealed a revenue amount of $811,181.91 for my trip to Boya. The committee was unable to independently corroborate this amount due to lack of relevant bank account, but nonetheless use it for the analysis in this audit report. The audit committee was unable to establish amount contributed from non-electronic platforms such as Bank Deposit Western Union, amount generated from fundraisers and individual cash contribution. Furthermore, the ISC um, top committee on account did not have access to other platforms, including PayPal, Cash App, and Wire Deposit. To bridge the gap between the available financial statement and lack of support documentation, the audit committee subpoenaed key persons to provide oral evidence with backup documentation, wherever possible to corroborate the financial transactions they undertook during the period under audit to a limited success. Of the 26 people, individuals that were supported, a total of 20 were interviewed. Three, three key persons refused to appear. I've mentioned those ones, and three did not appear because of time, uh, time and other constraints. Unfortunately, these individuals who refused to testify held key financial positions in the interim government and the information in their keeping was significantly important to the audit process however the isp top committee on accounts was able to secure a lengthy but unproductive oh, phone conversation with mr brado from former secretary of state for economy and finance because no substantive financial information related to facebook bank statements and other financial documents were obtained that could have had an impact on this audit report. Faced with the lack of, that number nine, faced with the lack of an internally accounting settings with the ID structure, the internal audit committee re-strategized the 13-man committee with an accounting subcommittee of three members to let a helping hand on accounting related issues while the 10 others focus on the core subject matter of audit auditing facilitated by three co-op members, by three facilitators. So conclusion of the IG arrangement for securing economy efficiency effectiveness in her use of resources. So here are the three E's, economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. 
the internal audit committee were looking into if the interim government looked into the economy, the efficiency, and the effectiveness of the project. The money that was generated, $1,364,309.83, that was generated, and the expense of $1,333,000. And thirty-three dollars and twenty-nine cents were actually um, economical efficiency and effectiveness in the projects that they carried out. The internal audit committee emphasized that out of the funds raised, amounting to um, the revenue, which is one million three hundred and sixty-four, and disbursement made amounting to one million three hundred and thirty three thousand and thirty six three hundred and thirty three thousand and thirty six dollars and twenty nine cents were not secured for economy efficiency and effectiveness the scope of the review um, of the IG's arrangement for economic efficiency and effectiveness in her use of resources. The internal audit committee undertook the review and um, planned the work in accordance with the code of audit practices based on the based on the risk assessment of risk and undertook such work considered <laughs> necessary to form a view of whether in all significant respect, the IG has put in place proper arrangement for securing economic efficiency, effectiveness in its use of resources. So in, in conclusion here, concerning uh, on the basis of the IAC work, Having regards to the guidance of the specified criteria issued by the IG, the Internal Audit Committee is satisfied that in all significant respect, the IG did not put in place proper arrangement for securing economy efficiency and effectiveness in its use of resources for the period ending 31st December 2018. Although some skeletal accounting and financial procedures existed as regards the management, of revenue, expenditure, and expenses. We certify that we have completed the audit of the financial statement of the interim government of Ambazonia in accordance with the requirements of the code of audit practice issued by International Organization of Supreme Audit Institute and internationally applicable in similar circumstances. So the auditor Titans, Tanya Eno, FCCA, and Tanjong Tajocha, ACCA. For and on behalf of the Internal Audit Committee of the Federal Republic of Amazonia, constituted Audit Committee, State House Boya, July 1st, 2019. And we've gone through the members of the Internal Audit Committee. So that is um, our certificate. So I'll go now to the financial statement proper. Financial statement, that is the, uh, the foot aspect. Financial statement, we have statement of comprehensive income. Ambazonian Foundation, we have $965,214. Um, out of that, $617,743 is my trip to Boya. Ambazonian Consulting, $399,096. Out of that, $193,439 was for um, my trip to Boya. So total of my trip to Boya is $811,181. Others, which is citizenship, lady and other donation, 
is 553,128. The overall total of comprehensive income is 1,364,310. Statement of comprehensive expenses. The expense, we have medical, medical assistance. We have foundation, $486,067. Consulting $87,800, the total of $573,867. The percentage of medical assistance on our total expenses is 43.05%. Communication second is 153,691 from foundation. And consulting 8,479, a total of $162,170, which is 12.17%. And Bazonian consulting is 140,984 foundation. And that was the total. A percentage is 10.58%. Um, legal fees foundation. $73,036, consulting $56,113, a total of $129,149, percentage 9.69. Travel expenses, foundation $13,518, consulting $63,694, a total of $77,212. Percentage 5.79. Charitable donations. Foundation zero. Consulting $65,026. Total $65,026. Refugee assistance. 54,823 for foundation and zero for consulting. 54,823 total and percentage 4.11. Office supplies, 7,555 foundation, 46,950 consulting, and total 54,505, percentage 4.09. Rent, zero for foundation, 25,783 for consulting, and 25,783 total, percentage 1.93. Conference and demonstration, 11,360 for foundation, 4,693 for consulting, a total $16,053, percentage 1.20. Contracted services. $4,237 for foundation, zero for consulting, $4,237 for total, percentage 0 0.32. Automobile, zero for foundation, $4,163 for consulting, $4,163 total, 0 0.31. Bank charges, $1,465 for foundation, 2,695 for consulting, a total of 4,160. Percentage 0 0.31. Subscription, zero for foundation, 4,131 for consulting, total 4,131, a total 0 0.31. Postage and mailing, foundation 3,946, consulting zero, total 3,946, percentage 0 0.30. Business registration, foundation 3,593, consulting zero, total 3,593, total 0 0.27. Professional fee, foundation zero, consulting 3,420, a total of 3,420, percentage 0 0.26. Utilities, zero for foundation, 1,881 for consulting, 1,881 total, percentage 0.14. Meals and entertainment, zero for foundation, 
$1,653 for consulting, $1,653 for, for total, and percentage 0.12. Repairs and maintenance, zero for foundation, $1,345 for consulting, $1,345 total, 0 0.10. Insurance, zero for foundation, 482 consulting, total 482, 0.04. Continuing education, zero for foundation, 280 for consulting, total 280, and percentage 0.02%. So the total, oh, sorry, advertising and promotion, 175, zero for consulting, 175 for, zero for foundation, 175, for consulting, total 175 and percentage 0.01%. So the total for foundation 954,274 and consulting 378,763, a total of 1,333,038. Statement of Income and Expense Expenditure Ambazonia Foundation Inc. So here we have specific statements where we, we, we split the foundation and produce their statement and split the um, uh, consulting and um, we presented their statement. So 4.21 is a statement of income and expenditure Ambazonia Foundation. So the revenue is Ninety nine hundred and sixty five thousand two hundred and fourteen. The total expenses, the expenses include legal, outside contract services, contracts, contracted services, medical assistance, postage and mailing, office supplies, telephone and telecommunication, other supplies, conferences and convention, travel and meetings, refugees and assistance, bank charges, business registration and of all the expenses of Ambazonian Foundation during the period under audit was 954,274. So it gave us a cash balance, a balance of 10,940. The statement of income and expend expenditure Ambazonian Consulting Inc. The revenue was $399,095. Expenses include medical assistance, charitable donation, travel expenses, legal fees, office supplies, rent, communication, conference and demonstration, subscription, professional fees, and charges, utilities, and entertainment, repairs and maintenance, insurance expense, continuing education advertising. The total expenses for Ambazonian Consulting was 378,762. So our net surplus or cash balance was 20,333. Sources and application of funds. Where we got the money, we got the money from Ambazonian Foundation and Ambazonian Consulting. And the total, uh, the Ambazonian Foundation, 9,965,214, which makes 70% of the overall revenue. And Ambazonian Consulting is $399,095, which had a 29.25%. The total revenue is 1,364,310. So that is our source of fund. Our application of fund, this money went to DHS Sebastian. The total he got was 367,531. That is 27.57% of the total expenses. Brado had 193,865, that is 14.54. Dr. Ali had 
DHS uh, John had 165,491, which is 12.41 percent. Ambazonian Consulting 140,984, which is 10.58 percent. Others. 122,324, which is 9.18%. SCBC payment, 98,249, that is 7.37%. Presidency, 86,521, which percentage is 6.49%. Chris Anu, in Chris Anu, 64,580, which is 4.84 percent. HSS Halesh, 54,769, which is 4.11 percent. Presidency Ayambe, 12,543, which is 0 0.94 percent. RC Restoration Council, 15,145, which is 1.14. Professor Anyangwe, 4,362, which is 0 0.33. Yeah. Bonga, 3,736, which is 0 0.28. And um, Njaru, legal fees, 2,936, which is 0 0.22. Our total expense was, uh, or application of the fund, which is expense, was one million three hundred thirty-three thousand and thirty-seven dollars. So our cash in hand, as at December thirty-first, two thousand eighteen, in um in the books was thirty-one thousand two hundred seventy-four. Thank you, um, Tanya, for uh, taking the time to present such a detailed. Uh, um anatomy of the of the of the finances um just a little uh summary here are there three things or three words that we ambassadors have to understand for us to run an efficient government not only do we have to be efficient we must work with the economy and we must be effective and uh, these are some of the cash words that uh, when we start uh, challenging our leaders uh you should be looking for words like this how are you making sure that this economy and the way we run affairs? How are you, how, what do you make to make sure that we have efficiency and effectiveness? So these are some of the cash phrases that we really have to take home today. Um, he also went through all the challenges that we went through. I don't have to repeat them once more, but what is more important because of these challenges, we have to resort to talking to people who were intimately involved in the, in, in, in the process. And we're able to talk to, 20 and uh, at least 20 people and the underlying theme was to make the process better so process improvement is actually the innovation of this group and i challenge anybody who thinks that this is not the way forward i'm going to turn over to comrade uh, francis shea uh, to give us a rundown of the process thank you over to you comrade shea thank you very much uh Comrade Tanyi, for that exhaustive presentation, uh, figures as sometimes very stubborn and difficult to uh, to absorb. And then you did a fantastic job with those those figures uh, in the different areas. And I thank you, uh, Dr. Mungwa, for giving me the opportunity to uh, at least uh, make a presentation of what we think that management should do. Comrade Tanyi and Comrade Mungwa, uh, Comrade Mungwa have already mentioned quite a good number of observations that we had and some of the risks that we face. And so here I'm just going to give you highlights of those things that uh, the government must do in the future in order to stay relevant with the Amazonian people. We must understand something that some of these deficiencies occur not because people wanted these processes to be deficient. We have to understand that the struggle started spontaneously. Nobody was waiting and planning for this struggle to be the way it was. It was spontaneous and it started on ground zero by, by our very, very uh, able 
military wing. And therefore, everybody came into this struggle not knowing where, whether to go left or to go right. Not with a financial system that was already ready at all. So we have to understand that we started the struggle, came spontaneously, and we merged ourselves into the struggle spontaneously. We started contributing towards it, and therefore there was no absolute system in place to have just gotten into it and start functioning uh, very well with international standards of, uh, of financial accounting and so on. So we have to have that in the background. However, from this presentation, we have quite a good number of observations and recommendations to the, the interim government. Number one, we don't have a controller, an accountant general, who should be looking at our finances right away and putting our financial statements to the Ambazonian people with regards to accountability and transparency. Those are, that was one of the things that we observed. And we are recommending here that the action that the interim government should take is to appoint an independent controller general who should be vetted by the Restoration Council and once confirmed, should stay in office, not subject to any political affiliation, but as independent as that person is to look into our finances and put our statements to the Ambazonian people that are credible and that are acceptable. And this person should stay in office as long as they are alive and working with Ambazonia. And there should be somebody who has credentials that are acceptable to the Ambazonian people. Number two, we realized and we observed that there were no accounting and financial statements with regards to revenue and expenses as Mr. Tanya has presented. We couldn't even find where funds were applied and there was non-compliance back and forth. Why? Because we did not get all the financial statements. We did not have access to the different platforms, financial platforms, banks, and so on. And so here we are recommending that the interim government should look for a way to retrieve this documentation under the custody of these officials who are no longer in government that Mr. Tanya had named before, because that information is key to everybody understanding the financial picture for the period that we audited. We also looked at whether this government has any financial policies and procedures, whether there was any manual, and we did realize that there was a, a financial policy and procedure manual, but it was the implementation that was lacking. Therefore, if you have financial policies and procedures that you put on the shelf, they don't do any good to anybody. And we are recommending here that, in fact, the interim government should look at how to obtain efficient and effective financial policies and procedures and put implementation strategies into place. Because when you don't implement policies, you have the kind of uh, disorder and chaos that we're having with the financial situation with regards to my trip to Boya, citizens' levy, and so on. So we are recommending that there should be some effective, efficient policies and procedures that are, would, would implement implementation strategies for all Ambazonians to see. Mr. Tanya had already mentioned that Despite the revenue collected, there was no budget. Which means that the disbursement of money was uh, being done on emergency basis as needs occurred. Somebody can just come into the, uh, the, the, 
the Secretary of State for Economy and Finance and request a sum of money because there was an emergency situation either on ground one or ground zero or because uh, the president had to travel to some place in emergency and they will disperse that money. So we are, we, we are actually saying that uh, there should be a budget if there is revenue, that revenue should be budgeted to each department and there should be controls so that there is accountability and transparency in all the departments. Because you cannot generate revenue and not knowing where that revenue is going and just disperse the money at ad hoc. The next thing is that the government created the counties and the local government areas. But because there is no public financial planning system, the counties and the local government areas were left to themselves, to fend for themselves. They generate revenue. They have to allocate that revenue the way they see it. Whether there is accountability or accountability system, it doesn't matter. Recommending here, therefore, that the federal government should create a public financial system and decentralize it to the counties and to the local government that is able to review these systems both at the national level and at the county and, and local level to see where Ambazonian uh, taxpayers putting their money where that money is going and so on. Revenue collection, as you, can, as you saw, is very deficient. Let us say here that the Ambazonia Foundation and Ambazonia Consulting are legal entities in the U.S. Ambazonia Foundation is a non-profit organization that was receiving money from donors. It is expected in the U.S. that when you donate your money to a non-profit organization, at the end of the year, there should be a tax filing. And not only that, you should receive a letter from them. We should benefit you in your tax deductions. You file that with the IRS and they give you some of that money back. We realize that these procedures, these procedures were deficient. I am not sure whether many of the people who donated to this platform received any letters. I personally did not receive one myself so as to use it for my tax deduction. These are legal People were not listening to their suggestions, and some of them ended up resigning from the board, leaving, therefore, the treasurer and few others. A treasurer that was not even, is not even accountable. A treasurer that actually refused to uh, uh, respond to the ethics committee when we did an investigation. A treasurer that actually uh, did not appear to talk to the audit committee at this point in time. Therefore, we must look at the Ambazonia Foundation, retrieve that entity and, and Ambazonia Consulting, retrieve those entities as legal entities under the custody of the government because we're exposing ourselves to the international community and to the American government if we are not careful in these areas.
They can start an investigation at any time if the taxes are not filed. They can start an investigation at any time if there is a complaint. And therefore, we must make sure that these legal entities in the United States of America, where our financial system is based, are well run. Therefore, the board of directors must be reconstituted. The board of directors must have power because their names are going to the state. There should be meetings by this board of directors. There should be elections by this board of directors. There should be minutes coming out of this, uh, this foundation so that if in case of any other audit, whether it is by the, by the United States government or the state of Maryland, this audit should be able to stand legal scrutiny. And so the risk are that we are exposing ourselves here if we have not already exposed ourselves. So these entities must be retrieved from the former uh, members of government that are still holding uh, their incorporation documentation and so that we can reconstitute it and make it legal, file taxes at the end of every year to stay legal in the United States of America. As we said, we're not able to capture all the revenue from my trip to Buea, except what Mr. Tanya has presented to us. And in fact, we want to thank the Director of uh, Resource Mobilization, Ms. Irene, for presenting the summary of $811,000 and, and change that helped us in our analysis of these uh, uh, finances. I must say here in, in, in ending, and uh, Dr. Yaya, you can come in uh, after I end here if you have any, uh, any other contribution to make to this. I must say this, we cannot continue to sit and wait and argue about these finances. Remember, this is a revolution. So far, the revenue is shown that we only contributed one point something million. We cannot expect this to fund this revolution. I have to take this opportunity to thank those of us who are continuously contributing while the argument is going on. We must contribute. If we really want Ambazonia to be free, we cannot base our argument on milk that has been spilled already. We must contribute. We must continue to donate to this cause if we want Ambazonia to be free. For those who are calling for an outside auditor or an independent outside auditor, what they want to tell us that they are not, there are no Ambazonians who, in fact, have integrity that can do internal controls and auditing. I think we have those people. But if people want to do that, they must make sure that, in fact, those who are, are not providing the documentation will be able to provide documentation to those people. We don't reject it. But we can't continue to base our, our focus on this, my trip to Boya, citizens levy and not contributing. Again, let me thank those who have been contributing. Let me thank the LGS and the counties who have been contributing. What we need to do now is just to put a financial system in place that would stand the test of time. I want to say that by exposing this issue, the Ambazonian people have done us well. You have already audited the matter. Because I don't think that any government, no matter who that government is in future, can venture, can venture into not uh, uh, being accountable and transparent to the Ambazonian people. You've already exposed the question. You've already exposed the issue. And therefore, you should be uh, 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 sure that the financial system that we're proposing here in future in reality, this is going to be effective going forward. And that's what we should look at. There is no government, no entity, no organization that doesn't have problems. Let our own problems not be the, the, the problems of the century that cannot be resolved. We think that by providing this uh, 
this, these recommendations that we're making here, we're contributing to solving this problem uh, so that Amazonian people can move forward in prosecuting this revolution and, of course, getting to Boya on time for us to actually settle down there, do politics, and manage our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Comrade Chair. Uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm very yeah, happy in the way you went into so much detail to explain to the Ambassador people. I think Yaya, if she has something to say, um, she's, she's, you know, it's all right to her. Hello, Comrade Yaya? Yes. No, I can't. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Increase the volume. I'm not hearing you. Please. Sorry, let me check my... Yes. Okay. Um, into my uh, evil senior comrades. All the other yes. Comrades. It's very low. Yes. Can you hear me now? So. Once more, good evening. Of people have. had the honor to work with for the past, um, say, 40 to 50 days. Uh, we've had intensive uh, and 40 nights uh, working to make sure that we give the best to the Ambazonia people. Again, I can just uh, only applaud and I say hats off, you know, for the high level of professionalism uh, that we've witnessed. And this really tells me um, that we can be proud that Or opinions. I think there was a great uh, degree of neutrality and fairness uh, that was seen throughout this exercise. And one thing I want to emphasize and to uh, uh, to our people is the the intention. To me, uh, the take home message is we can only learn.